Hello and welcome, Neil Ons here from Tykes TV. Got Tom in again. So, Tom, great to have you on board, mate. I know you've been busy, you've been away, and you've got light work and everything to do. So, great to have you on board. Um, yeah, first home game, Michael Duff against his former club, and he's come away with three points. What's your take on that, mate? Uh, good to be here, Neil. Thanks. Um, yes, yeah, so really, really um, overriding feeling of relief more than anything, I think, um, from that game. Um, I was thinking about it afterwards and thinking about how um, if we'd have not got a positive result, and I'm classing only a win as a positive result, really, but if we'd have not got a win, um, how the momentum and the tide could be going in the wrong direction again. Because you, you lose your first couple of games, then you've got Middlesbrough away in the cup, which is mm. awesome, which is I mean, one. Then you've got Derby away. And before you know it, you could be looking at four games without a win. And that's really not what's needed in a new era, is it? Where we've got a new manager involved. Whether, whether or not you think um, it's work in progress or you take your time, you still need to have something to hold on to. Um, and I, it were a bit of relief more than anything when that when that, uh, when that that goal popped in. Um, and to be honest with you, I've, I've read a few things from their manager saying that it were, it were a fairly even game. I, I disagree with that. Yeah. Um, uh, they didn't have the cutting edge. Um, the big difference in League One, and, and there's, there's a lot of differences, obviously, but a couple of those chances that they had, you're 2 0 down at Championship, um, and they didn't take them. Uh, they didn't take them. They were really, really good chances, um, and you're 2 0 down, which is good, but you've got to consider that those chances really, they, they were really easily carved out. Mm. Um, but the intensity, I thought we lifted the intensity. It was nice to see. Do you know we've we've not been used to having our five ten minute spells of pressure, you know, like bombarding yeah. them and getting in and getting punt in behind them and all that kind of stuff. So that were really good around the around the area when Thomas scored. We were turning the screw and I, I, were, I were always confident that we would score. Um but the longer it goes on, obviously, we said before in the other video that they they will be happy spoiling it and keeping mm. it and, and doing all that kind of stuff. And it was difficult. And again, lacked cutting edge. We lacked any kind of um, focal point up front. We lacked um, somebody to play off. Um, so Thomas was driving us forward, and and I thought I thought he was outstanding. I thought it was brilliant because he just kept going. Even when he had a couple of times and there were failed passes and there were failed dribbles, whatever, he carried on and he kept wanting the ball. He kept showing for the ball. Um, Benson as well, showing for the ball, wanting yeah. the ball. Um, and it's very easy when you're in a difficult situation when we've been in and we've lost games and we've lost um, games on the trot. We've had terrible seasons. It's very easy to go hiding a little bit and put the onus on somebody else. And them two, I thought, stepped up on Saturday big time. Yeah, I think from some good points here, what you made out as well, uh, brush back on them. But I think from Plymouth game, like you said, it was... I, th I think we had to see more of. Uh, obviously, we needed a win, but I think we had to see some performances in players as well. Uh, Kitchen, I thought, upped his game. I think you could tell that they had a rollicking through week, you know, for performance, for standards, because even Duff went on and said that it was disappointing to see that certain instructions, certain, you know, methods in players weren't followed out in Plymouth game, what we've been working on. So I think that got readdressed. Uh, I was surprised, if I'm being honest, that style started. Um, I thought he might have been rested. And Luca Connell were on bench instead. But again, I think when, you know, Nicky Cadden, I'm, I'm hoping it's not a, a serious injury because she went off just after the half hour mark or something. I think it's second half, we look more threatening. I think the I think the midfield trio at the time, Benson, Luca Connell, and Thomas, I think they, 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 print, they sent to gel and pro proper link up uh, better. Like you said, Via with Thomas, you were driving and driving. And it's no. no no disrespect to like Norwood or all like that, but it's like what you've said. We we are needing that physical presence up front to out ball up to fetch others into the game. Uh, final third uh, to be more clinical. Cheltenham, like like you said before, they they weren't clinical enough. I don't think they were unlucky. I thought it was just a matter of time and we were going to score. And like I said, I think the longer the game goes on the more it gets a bit more nervous and nervous and it's going to be a nil-nil this. But again, I think Thomas, Benson, Williams at times did well. Again, I'm thinking we still need strength, you know, we still need recruitment in certain areas. 
just to you know up his game because like I said, we've got Millsborough coming up, we've got uh, Derby County, we've well they've we'll never pizza trophy coming up, so there's going to be a lot of games coming round. Wolf, you know, uh, injured and stuff like that, so it's going to be more of a a squad game than a team game kind of thing. Would you be expecting? I mean, it sounds a bit daft, but would you be expecting two, maybe three signings coming before wind event, Tom? You know, like you've identified here as an, an attacker and other areas. I think he'll be desperate, um, Duff, from because from what I've from what I've seen, um, he's not adverse to mixing it up. So I wouldn't say it's not a let's play it short, let's do this, let's do that. Um, there were quite a few um, decent long balls, but quite a few aimless long balls on Saturday, which worried me a little bit because it were almost like we were playing with we were playing the way that Duff wants to play. And he does like knocking it forward. He does like doing that if it's the right ball and the right time, but not with the personnel to fit it, really. Mm. Um, so, for example, yeah, Carlton Morris would be a great player to play in that system. I know we're not going over all players, not going over, but yeah. in terms of knocking it down and winning it and playing off, um, there's no point in launching them balls. And, and Benson's very capable of playing a long ball. He even showed that last year a couple of times. And when he got time on the ball, he can he can spray it about a bit. Um, but aiming it long ball towards like your Norwoods and 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 Aitchison and and I, it will work a couple of times because I know the other the other bits is it's not always about winning it. It's about picking up the bits from mm. the knockdowns from from their players when they're defending. I get that. I get all those things. But. For it to go there, it's very easy to lose possession if you're playing in that in, in those um, situations. I think he's definitely looking for um, somebody who is a more of a focal point. Um, but as I keep saying, you tell me a team that ain't looking for that. Do you know yeah. that's why it's difficult? It's not just as easy as saying we need to get this. We all know what's needed. We all know yeah. what what what's going on. Um, um, and I got, I've got a bit of a different opinion on the, on the the whole Helix situation. It seems to quite a lot of people like we're saying about how much is he worth and stuff like that. Hmm. He's worth what someone's going to pay for him. Unfortunately, do you know what I mean? And yeah. if we're not, if we're not got the luxury of offers and we're not got the luxury of people coming in and we ain't got stuff like that, you can't be saying, oh, we're going to put five hundred grand on this player. Or we're going to do that unless these. Like I said before, there's a, there's people that need to go for us to for us to do that and get that, and these players cost money, so we're going to have to whether it be wages, whether it be transfer fee, uh, whatever. I would expect a couple to come in, but again, the quality and whether it's a loan or whether it's a permanent will depend on other players moving on. I'm sure I'm 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 sure of it because we haven't got that money to just go and say this is this. Um, yeah. A bit worried about, really worried about um, Styles because I, I just, I just think he's, I think he's a, a shell, of, shell of the player he was. I really do, absolute shell of a player. Um, I do think he's overrated in my opinion. Um, I know that will upset a few in the lot like him, and obviously he's got his international cap and he's got that. But I just feel like he, he's almost believed his own hype a little bit. Mm. I, I, I kind of get that. I, 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 I... I don't see him when he's been in Barnsley. I don't see him having his best game in central midfield. I see him as a more left wing back, left sided player. I think that's where he's more dangerous. I think back where Ballishmail got the best out of him as well. And I don't think is at times what I saw it in glimpses. I'm thinking, yeah, do you know what, that's a player. And then at other times, look really average. I'm thinking, I don't know. It, 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 I don't know if it's like his arts on on a on a move away. I don't know if it's his agent. You know pushing for this move away or whatever it is. But I think for all parties concerned, he wants to get sorted out soon rather than later because yeah. you can't keep on having look shared. And I don't mean this in a, a disrespectful way, but carrying a player, but it's like not really in it. I want someone who was going to be in it and like putting this in a bar and mm, I don't want to really pick up a bad injury or a bad tackle and it's probably possible scupper a move. So again, that's injuring Barnes in a way, progressing forward, which we need to do as a club, isn't it? I think it's injuring him as well, because if he is this player that he believes he is, and he is this player that a lot of people believe he is, and do you know what? He could go on, he could prove me wrong, he could prove all his doubt was wrong, but he um, he, he, he needs to 
then it needs to be set up for his good and for our good. Um, mm. Because the mark of a top player is to consistently do it all the time and consistently do it and consistently do it. And in terms of the last year for him, there's been no consistency whatsoever. There's not been consistency in the position he's played, in his play. Um, and again, he obviously has got stuff about him. There's a lot of players, though, in the lower leagues who can do magical things. They just can't do it consistently. And the only time I've seen him do it consistently is when he's played left wing back and he's played under Ishmael. And that's under a certain way of football. I haven't seen it anywhere else. So the, that's, a, that's a worry for me at the moment. Um, yeah. The Cadden, the Cadden ones, the Cadden one were disappointing um, as well. Uh, him going off, but not much you can do about that. Um, but yeah, I, I think, um, I think again, I think like you look at somebody like Cadden, and you look at somebody like um, you look at somebody like Styles. Does do think that um, Cadden is better suited to his style of play anyway? Do you know what I mean? Is he? Yeah. You just don't know, do you? Yeah, well, yeah. But I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, Duff's here now, and like I said, his style of play. If it's not going to fit him to that kind of thing, it's it's probably like better for him to go. Um, if he's got Karen VM and you've got Clark Adwer, who's you know possibly a left wing back as well, that could slot in that role. So it's like kind of leading us on to Middlesbrough game, which is going to be in Carabao Cup in midweek. Bearing in mind what's just happened, would you want to keep a settled side going into that, or you know? I'm thinking there's going to be a few changes for it, if I'm being honest, in, in Carabao Cup. I can see Collins getting rested and Petrol Malton in. Yeah. Um, probably Jason Stra. I'm just guessing here. I think he's just going to mix it up a bit. I think I, I, I think he'll be keeping an eye on what's going to be happening on Derby County at weekend, knowing that it's well, going to be a, a big test, isn't it? I'd be very, very surprised if Derby County is not top of the priority list. Um, mm. I think bring, he brought on uh, Honda Mark, didn't he, on Saturday? Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised to see him get a start. Uh, Kundi will get a start, I would imagine. Uh, Walton will get a start. Um, I would, do you know what? I, from I don't know how they view it, and I don't know um, what the cl club's view is on it. But I would play all those players. I'd play as many as you could, hmm. fringe players, and give them give them some minutes, give them some time. Even your doors and players like that, get, just give them some time. Uh, give Marsh a run. I thought he did well when he came on. Did all yeah. right. He did. He did what he was asked to do. Um, he put put some hard yards in. Put some chest down, didn't he? Really so I load my hands up and say that. I thought Cole when he came on did what he needed to do. I know he wasn't afraid. He didn't look like he's going to do it, but he did what he had to do. He charged yeah. down the players. He won a couple of tackles even, um, and he did that. And he. Um, he did what he had to. The both did well when they came. So let's give those players a bit of a give those players a bit of a run. I think it's a good opportunity to do that. Um, he'll obviously be wanting to not go and get absolutely taken to bits. But um, in terms of priorities, I don't think it's a huge priority for the. I would be surprised if it's a huge priority for Duff. I don't think it will be. Mm. And we'll we'll mention it briefly because uh, we don't middle brigade kind of thing. Will we'll Barnes be playing in the shirt sponsor? I mean, there's been a lot of stuff kick off on on Twitter and social media. And again, I know clubs investigating, they're looking at all avenues and that now, what's broke out on it. And I don't know if you want to comment or what your view on this, Tom, like, but would you think that they possibly do not play in the shirt sponsor, Middlesbrough? Um, I think it's a very, I think it's a very difficult one. Um, first of all, I know nothing about it, so I can't say it's terrible this, it's terrible that, and I would have to look into it a little bit further. Um, what I would say is that it's good that people are asking questions because it's always good when people are asking questions, and it's fine for people to have an opinion as well, it's fine for whatever it is. Um, the only thing I would hope, and the only thing that, that I'm hoping happens from this, is that the club do a thorough investigation, have a look at it. See what they've done. See if they've made a mistake. See if it's something that they need to talk to the fans a little bit more about. Um, the supporters trust have got involved as well. That's just, uh, yeah, Barnes's supporters trust as well. Yeah. They've got I, involved in that. I read that, and I think if the supporters have got a, if they've got um, concerns and stuff, it's important that they're heard. It's important that whether you agree with it or not, or whether I agree with it or not, it's it's irrelevant. If it's affecting a few people and it's affecting, then 
the questions should be asked and they should they should find out. And do you know what? If the club turn around and they say, right, well, we've made a mistake and we're going to take it off, fair play to them. Mm. Um, and if they have not done the due diligence, that's poor, isn't it? But mm. if they make it right and if they look into it, then um, I think... Lessons can... learned. Well, I think it, I just think it's good that I just think it's good that people have got a voice and that, that they can that they can see what's what. Um, but I can't say myself, um, and you've got to be really careful in like I won't want to denounce a whole group of people do, that I don't mm. know anything mm. about. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So um, it's one of them that it's one of them that I'm sure will uh, rumble on. But I, I'd much rather talk about the fact that we've got a wind under his belt and the fact that we are hopefully. Um, Starting to see a few, see a few things that are really, really positive. Um, I just wanted to mention today, um, Neil, as well about Luke Thomas. Um, yeah. Just in general, um, it's something that's quite close to my heart. I've had, I, I've had a couple of friends who have taken their own life. Um, mm. A couple of friends who have been similar, similar age to me. Um, and for him to come out and be to say that he's found things difficult and to say that he has needed that time away and to say that he's um, done that and to come back the way that he has for such a young lad yeah. should be massively applauded. And you can forget how much money he's on, you can forget all that kind of stuff because mental health affects us all at some point. Um, and it should be looked at same as physical health and all that kind of stuff. It's really so, so, so important. Um, and just massive. I'm so pleased that he's come back in, um, just as a human being, and the way that he's come back in, and the way that he's he's dealt with that. I know you've done stuff for, you've said Liam Jones stuff. legacy, yeah. Um, and this is this is this is the thing. I think there's a lot of stuff with social media, and there's a lot of stuff going on at the moment. And I see, and I just think we need to do it sometimes. Just rein it in, and just have a little think about what's happening. Um, think about the human being as opposed to, yeah. The footballer sometimes and think about this stuff. and we're all guilty of it listen i've said before i've i've slid players off and said players should be doing this players should be doing that that's just the i would say the passion of the fan but it don't make it right don't make it mm. right sometimes it's easy for us to say oh look thomas wasting money what a waste there. he's earning all this money and he's doing this and he's doing that and we've no idea what's going on behind the scenes we've got no idea what's happening mm. with him so i would i were absolutely delighted for him um and the way that the fans the fans haven't got on his back either, which I think is good from us because I think in terms of him being away and him going and doing what he's doing, it'd be quite easy to say, well, I will crap before, so what we're going to yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it would it would just be a good moment all around. Couldn't pick somebody better to start winner, to be honest. Yeah, fully deserved and a, a great... Uh, I think we'll end it on that, Tom, because what you've said via can't... Can't really answer it to be fair because we added uh, Liam Jones legacy with Barnsai.com and Tights blog. It were a twenty-four year old, twenty-four year old lad that took his own life, and did a bit of a video on that, and it got a bit emotional because you you, you don't realise what's going on behind the scenes and what's going on through COVID, and someone at twenty-four year old, all life in front of him. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So yeah, hundred percent agree what you said, VMA. Um, so we'll leave it on that. I think deservedly man at match and uh, he deserved it. He deserved goal. Uh, Luke Thomas is a red. All being well, we can score a few more and he looked happy in his son uh, yeah. after the game as well. So, yeah, thanks, Tom. I really appreciate that, mate. And uh, thanks to everyone on board. Um, enjoy that, mate. Good stuff. Cheers, Neil. You reds. 